A lot of the times people say, oh, look at these people, they are so lazy, they don't want to work. This is totally wrong. You can get people to do what you want them to do if you have the right incentive. Now, everyone knows Donald Trump is a big mouth. He's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, can you tell, tell Donald Trump to shut up? Yeah, of course. Imagine if Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Roland Berkowitz, Mark Zuckerberg, and who is the guy with Amazon? Jeff Bezos. These rich guys in the world sit together. Everyone take one billion dollars, put it on the table. So you get five billion dollars. They put it in a trust fund and ask Donald Trump, come here. From this moment on, you shut up. This five billion dollars is yours. What would Donald Trump do? From now on. In other words, you can get people to do what you want them to do if you have the right incentive. There are no lazy people in this world. It's just they don't have the right incentive to make them work. If they face the right incentive, they will work. So, principle number one to principle number four, they aim at explaining decision making process. That is, every choice we make is a result of benefit cost analysis. And we do that using the marginal benefit, marginal cost approach. That is, picking the next move, you will look at what are the costs involved and what are the benefits involved from that next move that you plan to, to decide whether you want to take it or not. And because we have scarcity, that's why we need to sacrifice something if we want to get other things. And now, Number five, train mixed people better off. Now, train is actually an exchange. Remember back in elementary school, during lunch time, you train your sandwich or spaghetti from your best friend during time. That is train, that is exchange. So, exchange between people, or between firms, or between countries, will make them better off. How do we know why trade will make people better off? Just ask yourself, if I want to give you this pen, and ask you to give me your Apple MacBook, would you do it? Of course you don't, unless I'm Taylor Swift. I use this pen to sign autographs, and I kiss this pen, and you will give up your lap laptop for this pen, but I'm not Taylor Swift, so my pen doesn't work that much. So if I give you this $2 pen and ask in return for your $1,000 MacBook, you will be worse off. If this trade will make you worse off, you will not have incentive to engage in trade. In other words, when two parties engage in trade, they must both get something out of this trade deal. They must be benefit from the trade deal. That's why trade makes people better off. And now you know why Donald Trump is a big mouth. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He talks about trading with Canada, making the Americans worse off. Really? <coughs> we have the North American Free Trade Agreement since the early 1990s. For more than 25 years, are the Americans really that dumb? If we make them worse off, they still keep trading with us? Hmm. Are they that stupid? Yeah, most of them are, but not all of them. <laughs> so, in other words, Donald Trump said trading with other countries will make Americans worse off. He doesn't understand one basic principle that you guys learn in the first day of class in the first year. And he claimed he went to Walter School of Business, the top school in the state for business. And obviously, he did not go to any lecture. 
<laughs> All right. Number six. Number six. Exchange. Thumb. In mark. Ten. To reach. Equilibrium. In other words, the market has its mechanism to settle at a point that no one wants to deal with. So equilibrium means settle down. Now, how do we know? For example, in a store, it has 10 TVs. And the buyers, the consumers, only want. 5 TV at this price, let's say $700. So the TV is sold for $700. The store has 10 TV, but at $700, only 5 consumers would like to buy. In other words, there will be 5 TV no one wants to buy. So this market would not sell because the seller has something. The seller wants to sell, but he cannot sell it. So what is the mechanism to bring the buyers and the sellers together and clear the market such that everyone who wants to buy can buy what they want to buy. Everyone who wants to sell can sell what they want to sell. So the mechanism is here is simple. lower the price. So this is the mechanism. The market has this mechanism when the price is free to adjust so that it will adjust to a point in which when the price drops, more people would like to buy TV. And then there may be five more customers who come to buy the remaining five TV. And then the store will be able to sell all 10 TVs at a lower price. And the people who want to buy the TV at the lower price, they will all get the TVs they want. So this is the mechanism, which we will come back in chapter 3 in more detail. So if we rely on the market, the market tends to give us a mechanism that will match what the sellers want to sell to what the buyers want to buy. The next, number seven. Markets typically need to be efficient use of resources. Anyone still remember the name Blackberry? 
Yeah, anyone using BlackBerry phone? Well, be careful. That can become an antique, antique item. <laughs> now, 15 years ago, BlackBerry was the number one phone. Now, why it dies? Well, because it doesn't have the features that people like anymore. It insists on the stupid keypad. iPhone 3 came out with the entire screen, the full screen and entertainment, instead of a work phone to answer text messages or email. iPhone had what people need at that time, a personal entertainment center, a smartphone. Battery failed to offer what people want, that's why battery not desirable anymore. When people don't want this product, they won't buy it. When they don't buy this product, the firm will not get the money. If the firm cannot get the money, it will not be able to get resources. And the firm will die. In other words, only firms get something we want. The firm will have money to use the resources. Remember, we have limited resources. So the resources in the economy will only go to firms that are successful that are producing things that we want, profitable. And therefore, we won't be wasting our resources to produce something that we don't want.
Sí. You don't know how to take a choice. You cannot do what you want. Would you be happy? No. So, the result would not be happy for the people. And this is why, right now in the world, where can we find communist country? North Korea. And how does it do? Well, it's doing well for the people in power. Yeah, he must be the only person who is overweight in that country. <laughs> the country is suffering starvation. So, under the command system, the government is not God. The government does not know what you need, what you want. Only you know what is best for yourself. Just like everyone in the market. Everyone looking for what they want in the market. When they find what they want, the two parties engage in an exchange, and these parties will be better off. In a communist country, you are being told to do everything. You don't have a brain, you don't have a choice. You live like a zombie, you will not be happy. So, the market system can stand the test of time. Since we have civilization, we, as mankind, rely on the market system. That is, from day one, we exchange things with our neighbors, with people in the same village, with people in the same town, same city, same country. This is how we exchange the market system. Now, how long is communist country last? The first one, 1917, in Russia. And it fell apart in 1990. 73 years. It lasts only 73 years. Compared to the market system, thousands of years. Which work, which doesn't work, obviously you can easily tell. Having said that, number nine, when markets fail, that means when market does not give us the outcome that people are happy, that is most beneficial for these people, what we call market failure. Example for that, air pollution. Why do we have air pollution? Well, because people try too much. Now, last year, if you ask me, why do I try so much? I will tell you, because I need to go to work, I need to do grocery shopping, I need to go golfing, I need to meet my friends. That's why I drive so much. When you ask me, well, you know when you drive, you will cause air pollution. Yeah, 